Hi, and welcome back to our Sprinter build series. If you're new to the channel, we're taking this new Mercedes Sprinter van and we're turning it into a camper van for a small family. So today we're working on overhead cabinets. So um, I've got a friend who has really good woodworking skills and he's got really nice equipment. So we took this three quarter inch uh, bamboo and um, cut some doors to fit the overhead cabinets. So the doors have already been cut, now we need to install hinges and the latches, so that's what we're going to do today. Let's take a look. So you might remember, if you've watched my past videos, we've been through this rodeo before, hanging this door. So we're using the exact same hardware on this door. So if you want more information than what's in this video, you might look back um, at the, uh, the drawers and cabinet door video. So up here, what we want is we cut the door a little bit small because I wanted to have a little bit of a reveal top and bottom. I think the aluminum looks nice, but um, I did want to cover it fairly substantially with wood, but we're going to see a little bit of a reveal here. So the first thing we need to know is the overlay on our door. So the overlay is the amount that this lays over the framing. So in this case, we line it up and we see, little focus, that it's 35 millimeters. So we're going to use a chart that shows how far down we need to measure and drill the hole for the hinge cup for it to sit here. So in this case, using the instructions on the Blum site, we know that to get a 35 millimeter overlay that we're going to have to drill our hinge cups 24, did I say inches? 35 millimeter overlay. So we need to um, do our hinge cup 24 millimeters down from the top of the door. We're going to be using these uh, 8020, calls them T-nuts, that we're going to slide into the track of the 8020 and this is what's going to hold the brackets for the hinges. These are way oversized. These are 5 sixteenths. I'm using them only because I have them on hand. I would probably use the quarter 20 size. That would probably be perfect. And the holes in the brackets don't align with the slot in the 8020. So you just need to drill holes down a little further. And then you've got a super solid mount for your hinges. When you go to mount your hinges on the door, you're going to need lifts in order to hold the, uh, the door open. So be sure to set your hinges in enough that there's clearance for this sort of thing. If you mount it right here, you're probably going to have a conflict. So just something to think about. I might have made a slight change. I'm moving the hinge cup up one millimeter. So our new number is 23 millimeters that we need to be down from the top. And then our bit, we're using a special bit meant for these hinge cups. It's 35 millimeters in diameter. So I want to find the point where I need to start the drill bit. So half of 35 millimeters is 17 and a half. So I came down 22 for the top of the hinge cup and another 17 and a half, which is 40 and a half millimeters. So this is going to be the center point for my drill. This is three quarter inch wood. The hinge cups need to be half inch deep. So you want to make sure you don't drill through this. This happens to be half an inch deep. So we just want to drill so that the counter or the uh, drill bit is just basically countersunk into the wood. And then you want to stop at that point. So I decided to mount my hinge cups four and a half inches in from the edge. So I have a template that I'm using. This is my 35 millimeter hole. And this is just gonna keep the drill bit from accidentally walking. Now that we have our holes bored, I'm going to drop in our 
hinge cups or hinges. After I set the hinges for one door, I put it up just to make sure that everything's right because that way if I have to make adjustments to the other ones, let's say move a hinge cup by a millimeter or something, I still have that option. So I put this one up and I have not made any adjustments to the hinges at all. You can move them around and it's sitting on here dead level. So by taking the extra time and making sure that you've got precise measurements, it saves you a lot of grief later. So we've got our two hinges bolted in, but naturally these won't stay open on their own. So we still have to install the lifts and also the latches. At least we've got one hung. Now with our lift, we have similar issue that we had with the hinges, and that is that these holes don't line up. So what we're going to do, the aluminum is 38 millimeters wide, so we'll put a hole, a uh, new hole, 19 millimeters in, and we don't need two holes. We'll just put one, probably more or less, up here. And the reason for that is because this arm, um, when it's seated on this pen, um, it gets really close to the bracket and the bolts that I have are not low profile so this will end up hitting the bracket so I will just put one is more than enough and so I'll just put one right here Alright, here's the situation. Situation is we don't have a situation, which is just what you want. It works great. So here's our single bolt that we put in. And when the door goes down, it never touches that. So by moving it up, it sort of centered this bracket. There is no need for a second trying to stress about getting a low profile nut or whatever back in here or bolt. One is just fine. The way that I lined this up was I opened the door up all the way. I set the height here and because this is spring loaded I let it just hit the top of the cabinet here. And then I bolted it down in this location. I marked it here. I closed it to make sure that it didn't conflict with anything and that worked out great so I went ahead and just screwed it down. So here's how it looks from the inside when you close it. I basically set the height of this so that my doors would come up and not quite touch the ceiling. I don't want grimy fingerprints on the headliner up here where people go to grab the the door to close it so that's what determined the height of this. So this one is enough to hold the door up. Um, I ordered two because that's how the weight of the door you give Bloom the manufacturer of these which by the way they're if you've ever worked with their stuff it's just a really nice nicely made stuff but um, it's specced out for either one of the most heavy duty models was go I was going to max it out, so I decided to go with two on a medium setting. One does hold, but the fact that these doors are 10 pounds each, I wouldn't mind that many more connection points to hold this door on just in case we got into an accident or something. So that's my thinking there. Okay, now I need to load one of these into this column to support our arm.
Well, there's one big advantage to using anchor fasteners on your 8020 rather than angle brackets. I got a little carried away in getting this done, and I need to get the floor in first because there's a trick to it. But that'll give you a chance to see how cool some of this hardware is. Like this. Look at that piece of hardware. So I need to I need to remove this post and this one so that I can pull this out a little bit. So to do that, we push that. To release this arm. And we're going to remove this. Okay, now we're going to remove this one. And now this will slip into the slots. theory. Okay. There's our floor. Now I had to lock these fasteners down permanently because I can no longer access them once I slide these panels in place. So slide this one in. I slide the back panel in and it'll and it'll made up here the last pieces I put in are the ends that sandwiches the whole thing together so now I just put my end caps back on. Now we just clip this back on. Good to go. That's what I love about 8020. 
done. I can slide this as needed. It's just, I think it's so much easier than working with wood. Now, without much in the way of adjustment for me, they line up pretty good. I'm looking at this. I left a little bit of a reveal right here on the bottom. Yeah, it's nice and even. The gaps look pretty good. Did our grain match through here. All open nicely. I don't have the soft clothes on them yet. Just need to snap them on. So that is a ton of storage space that I didn't previously have. And I just love this hardware. It's stuff, it's so adjustable. And um, for one, I mean, I already have a lot of adjustment using the 8020. I was like, if this was a little bit off, I could loosen this bolt, move it up and down. Um, same with the hinges. The hinges, you can draw the wood closer to the framing or move it further away. You can move the door up and down. Um, there's a third adjustment. I don't know what that does, but anyway, very, very pleased. And it was very easy to do, I think. All right guys, that's all for today. Next time we'll install our latching hardware and put some end caps in these cabinets. And then the only thing that's left at that point is to sand them, put some polyurethane on them and they're done. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.